welcome to this segment of Black Spring with Autumn on your Friday. And I just want to bring a bit of a bring a bit of a an ideology that has been around for some time. And it's actually what I consider a it's a sub a sub ideology which comes under a large umbrella of Marxism. And you've got these, what I consider subcultures or subcategories that that spur or that are spurs or sprouts is what I can, you know, from a, from a visual standpoint. So what I'm looking at here is we've mentioned this before. We've talked about different, um, different mechanisms and we're talking about socialism and we're talking about intersectionality. And I wanted to share a piece with you that's written by Del Tackett and it was written on November 24th. And according to this, one of the growing pieces of the Marxist socialist worldview in our culture is the theory of intersectionality. If you haven't heard of it, you will. It is an important element used to create a quote, victim class, end quote. The theory of intersectionality was developed by Kimberly Crenshaw, a professor both at UCLA and Columbia Law Schools. She was also key in developing critical race theory, an outgrowth of the critical theory developed by the Marxist scholars, the Franklin School, or what I refer to as the Frankfurt School, who came to Columbia University in the early 1900s from Germany. Now, Crenshaw originally developed the theory to explain why a Black female was subject to a unique kind of oppression rather than a separate oppression for being a female and being Black. The Black female was in a, quote, intersection, end quote, of two oppression roads that made her subject to a distinctive form of discrimination. Now, in her talks, she speaks of intersectionality applying to all points of oppression, racism, xenophobia, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, classicism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. The theory posits that the more your quote identity in quote includes these oppression points, the greater is the oppression by the hegemony and its social structures upon you. This should sound familiar to you now. Intersectionality, in short, is a way for people to grade their, quote, victim status, end quote. By this, I mean that intersectionality gives the mechanism by which one can sort of add up victim points and thereby increase their status in the victim class. It has also created new subclasses such that one is no longer Latino and transgender, but a, quote, transgendered Latino, end quote which is of a higher status in the victim class than just the addition of the two. In this way, it creates a greater animosity toward the hegemony, almost a multiplier. So a non-binary, disabled, transgendered Palestinian immigrant, in quote, has therefore much more reason to be angry about being oppressed. Now, this is a point of highlight. I consider the sinister part is that it whispers enticing words to draw people into the web of self-centered victimism. It's all about you, where one is stroked with tantalizing thoughts of being significant and powerful because of how oppressed you are. This, much like the temptation of Eve, will lead to self-destruction, not the promised self-identification. You surely will not end up like God, you will surely end up a slave. This, of course, is why those in the body of Christ must resist it. For this worldview enslaves people and makes them most miserable, as we have seen throughout the history of the last century in places like Venezuela and North Korea today. Additionally, intersectionality furthers a notion of, quote, systematic, end quote, oppression. This implants in the mind as Marxist socialist worldview wants to do a view that the whole system is bad and needs to be overthrown. Therefore, we get the introduction of phrases like, quote, systematic racism, end quote, that infect the mind with an assumption that if you're Black, no matter where you are, you are systematically oppressed, regardless of the reality of your experiences and circumstances. If you are a Black NFL player making millions of dollars a year, 
beloved by millions, you are still systematically oppressed because you are black. The same perspective is sown for everyone in the victim class. If you are a homosexual, regardless of whether you are enjoying great freedoms and success, you are systematically oppressed. If you are a female, even if you are a CEO, you are systematically oppressed and so on. How do we overthrow corruption? This discord, of course, is exactly what the Marxist socialist worldview seeks to create a rage against the cultural hegemony and all of its structures to tear them down. Quote, this is the highlighting section here that I provide. At the heart of this is the enemy's number one scheme to destroy relationships. Intersectionality not only forces me on my systematically oppressed identity, but it also makes me hate the entire system oppressing class. It makes me hate the wealthy. It makes me hate white. It makes me hate the social structures straight white males have built. It makes me hate cops. It makes me hate, just hate. The biblical worldview calls us to the opposite. Our identity is in Christ. We don't, quote, identify, in quote, as Miley Cyrus does as, quote, pansexual, in quote. We don't identify as black or binary or trans or poor or Latino or in the increasing number of subcultures or tribes that Marxism gleefully seeks to generate in order to stoke the fires of strife and revolution. In Christ, there's no longer male versus female or Jew versus Gentile or poor versus wealthy. For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, that our unity would show the world that we are his and that he is truly the son of God. This is one of the great hallmarks of Christianity. We love and fellowship with the wealthy, though we are poor. We love and fellowship with the poor, though we are wealthy. We love and fellowship with the white, though we are black or Latino. We love and fellowship with the CEO, though we are a line worker. This is the remarkable unity that God has created in Christ. And we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. This enemy divides. God wants to unite. The enemy sows seeds of lies and distrust. God calls us to truth. The enemy stirs up anger and bitterness and hatred and violence. God calls us to love. When we see injustice, we don't stereotype and foment hatred against a whole group of people. We seek justice for the one wronged and transformation for the perpetrator. This keeps it local where it needs to be. We don't spawn into mobs or riots in cities across the nation that destroy. If there's a bad cop, we seek to remove and reform him. We don't hold up signs that say, quote, all cops are bastards, end quote. Intersectionality was spawned in the university and now breeds and multiplies in the online ethernet. I'm sick of researching them. They are filled with self-centeredness and discord and angst and bitterness and hatred toward the hegemony and its social structures. We are called to something different. We are called to love those who hate us. We are no longer, we no longer see the person from a worldly perspective. Those outside of Christ have been taken captive by the enemy to do his will. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone able to teach, not to resentful, not resentful. Opponents must get, must gently, must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant the repentance, leading them to a knowledge of truth and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. This is chapter two of Timothy, verse 24 through 26. This includes Dr. Crenshaw and all of those who are being seduced into the Marxist socialist worldview do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your by the renewing of your mind. And that's Romans chapter two. Verse. Chapter 12, verse two. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to this section of Black Spring with Autumn and. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments on the on the unconstrained and just the direction of of this type of Marxism and or, or neo Marxism or what your thoughts are overall. Thanks so much for joining me.